Hello, Ken Weller here from New Tech Inventors, and we finally got our little counter, our prototype of our uh, filament counter set up here, and we're going to run this thing for you, and it looks like it's going to work out pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start working on the complete version of this, since this is just a prototype. The final version will be a lot different. We'll have an LED lighted display, larger display for the counter. We'll also have a motorized uh, take-up spool. We'll have a feeder device to evenly put the filament on the roll in a good tight pattern. And uh, so anyway, there's, there's a lot of work to be done on it, but this, this is more or less for proof of concept to see if it's going to be able to count this filament and tell us how much we've got on our spool. Before I run the test on this, I'd like to show you just a couple of clips of some of the things that I had to do to make this device. Okay, using my Dremel tool here. And what I've got is I've got my Dremel tool hooked up. I've got my light source here so I can see. I've also got this um, magnifier here, so it magnifies it for me so I can see really well. Plus, the magnifier acts as a shield that uh, helps protect my eyes. Cut one the same length there. Again, we're going to be using the helping hand to uh, solder these wires onto these LEDs. To solder those, it's a little tedious thing. So this magnifying glass, the two clamps, one holding the LED and holder and the other holding the wire, and this little additional light from my LED here will uh, help me perform the task. Okay, we've soldered one lead. Cut uh, my wire. Okay. That one's... And yeah, let's just position it around here the way we need it. Okay. Got it in position. Now we come in and put some solder to it. Okay. Take our clamp loose. We've got our two leads there, part here out of the clamp. And as you can see, we've uh, got them both soldered now. Okay, I've got my base here and I've got my counter mounted to the base, got the base mounted to the board. And I got my little rewind, temporary rewind here spool. I need to mount it to this board, and I need to mount this uh, new roll base to the board. So, what I did was uh, made a little mounting bracket. Um, plan on making several of them, and here's where we are in the printing process now. Get those printed, and get them installed permanently mount these things and we'll be ready to test this thing out.
Okay, here's the final prototype. We've got our counter down here. And if you can see the count, we're at 694 on the counter. So our current count is 694. And this is our take-up spool, which we're right now for test purposes. It's just a hand crank going through our counter to our digital readout. On this spool, we've measured this out and we have 20.07 meters of filament on this spool. And of course on this one, nothing other than just the little lead that we've uh, put into here. So what we're going to do is start cranking away and see if our counter, if you remember correctly, this thing's set at 16.3 centimeters per revolution. So let's go ahead and crank this filament off and do our calculations, 694, I'm writing that down. Okay, let's let her rip. As you can see, she's, we're counting away here. Filament's coming off the spool, going on to the new roll here. Counter's working. Of course, the take up spool, I've got, <laughs> I made some holders for it. I don't have anything for this one it's coming off of. That's why it's so noisy and everything. But I don't know if you can make that out, but it's, we're at 776. Count. Let's keep on going. And when it runs off, we'll check the count. There we go. Okay. Let's see what the count is. I'll put some light on it so we can read it. It's 822, 822. So during our calculation, 822, this is where we calculated it. We should have had 127 counts to get to um, our 20.7 millimeters. And that would have been brought us up to 821 and we're actually reading 822 but that's because I wasn't really counting on it coming all the way off the spool so this uh, even though it's a rough and crude prototype here it does give me a way that uh, I can accurately count this filament length and that will help me because what I'll be doing, I'll be taking these full new spools of filament. And then if I'm going to be printing that filament on six different printers, I'll take six empty spools and I'll pull the amount that I need off of this one fresh new spool of filament and then when I'm finished I just have to seal up this one spool with whatever's remaining on it and go ahead and put these five or six spools that are preloaded with the correct amount of filament for the job which is kind of like on this job here it's calling for uh, 8.47 meters of filament so I would and I'm printing that job right now over here it's a test part 
but instead of having a full roll of filament back there, I would uh, be using less. And I'm also printing another part over here on this printer using also the same black uh, filament. So we've got two full rolls that we're using. But with this device, I would only have one roll and I would um, be able to take off of that, again, like I said, the exact amounts that I need. So this is, for me, uh, really helps in inventory because I don't have to have, if, I'm print, if I have a part that I don't print that often, but when I print it, I want to print a certain quantity and that takes multiple printers, then I want to be able to do all of that and only have one spool open in inventory. And this will allow me to do that. This will allow me to only have one empty spool, I mean partially used spool. Right now, I have at least 80 or more uh, partially used spools of filament. And I can reduce that with this machine down to, well, it'd basically be reduced down to the number of colors that I have in each type of filament, like PLA or PETG or ABS or whatever. So instead of having 80 plus rolls sitting out there on the shelf, I could get that number real quick uh, down to probably about 20 spools of filament partially used. And that would be a, a pretty good savings for me. Plus, when I get through printing, I don't have to worry about taking the remaining filament and putting it in some type of a storage bag or something, putting silica gel in there, because there won't ever be any filament left this spool will be empty like this. If this job, if this was an actual application and the job called for 20 meters, and a lot of my jobs usually run around 25 meters. So if I was running several jobs at 25 meters, then each one of these rolls, when that printer quits printing, there might be a maybe one turn left on that spool with that because it will figure it that that close and that accurately so that's that's where this thing's going to save me some money and save me time because when the job's finished like i said i just throw this empty spool in the bin and i've already got the new spools and the new type filament or the new color or something for the next job that's going to run and I'll just put that on in place of the empty spool and be off and running and knowing that when that job finishes that that spool also will be empty. So there she is and I've got a lot of detail. I took a lot of video when I was putting this thing together and if you're interested in that I'll I'll show a few clips, and if it sounds like some people were interested, I'll, I'll do another video showing a lot of the uh, just step-by-step -step way that I put this thing together. And as I mentioned in one of the comments, this, this whole thing didn't cost me a penny. It cost me some time, but I already had, obviously, the filament. I already had these leftover... Um, uh, spool holders. I had the electronic parts and counter and rollers, stuff like that. I had those parts. I made most of the rest of it. I made the um, spool holder here. I made this handle. I made the hold downs. I made this box for the electronics and as well as this piece here that houses the, uh, the counter mechanism. So, other than a little bit of time and a little bit of filament and some scrounging up some parts for something that didn't cost me anything but time, I think it's, it's actually going to pay for itself.
over and over. And now that I've proven to myself that this will work, all I have to do is perfect the counter a little bit. The mechanism works all right, but I can double the accuracy of it by putting another magnet in and doing two counts per revolution. That way I'll be just counting every half revolution or every eight centimeters. So that will get me a little more accurate. And uh, another thing too on the counter, we'll want to go to something digital there with a the display. Easier to read. Obviously the spool holder over here needs to be uh, set up with uh, an actual holder that will hold the spool correctly and have ball bearings and so forth. So it'll run smoothly feeding the counter. And then the take up end is going to be motorized and we'll use some type of a stepper motor there probably so that we can uh, accurately control the speed of it as it takes up. And then we're also going to have a little mechanism between the uh, take up spool and the counter that will actually allow us to feed, move the filament back and forth to evenly roll the filament and tightly roll it onto the uh, spool. So we've got several things to do and I've got plenty of time to do it. But in the meantime, until I get to that point, I could go ahead and do this. I noticed it didn't take me long to crank that thing off. As a matter of fact, I'll do some tests when I'm not holding the camera and everything and just see how fast I can uh, take 25 meters off of this thing. Because, uh, you know, in a 12 hour shift, most of my jobs run around 25 meters. There are a lot of them that will run about 36, 48 hours. So that might be about 100 meters. It probably wouldn't take that long, even with the hand crank, to pull that filament off the spool. So we might, uh, we might do a little bit of that. Uh, maybe touch this up a little bit. And I've got some jobs that so are probably going to run about 12 hours that I need to run down at the print farm. Some parts for the helping hand, actually, to keep up with uh, some assembly work. So I'll uh, probably test it out on those, see how well it works. And if it works good, that will encourage me even more to get on the ball and go ahead and build the motorized, fully uh, automated version. When I get that going, I'll show you how it works.